Hey guys, uh, I'm going to try and make this a real quick video. Obviously we're talking about auxiliary lights for the Tenere 700. Now when I ordered some uh, LED aux lights for this thing uh, a couple of weeks ago, I pretty much assumed it would be an easy job to run them off a relay, tap into the high beam uh, circuit and just have them come on with the high beams. That's all I want. Um, I don't want a switch on the handlebars. I don't want them on all the time. I don't want them running at 10% brightness during the day and you know full power with high beam I just want them off unless my high beams are on back in the old days that was easy because we didn't have LED headlights and all this crap basically as I have discovered you just you can't do it because the high beam wire that runs from the battery to the headlight carries 12 volts uh, whenever the ignition's on so low beam 12 volts. Uh, when it's flicked onto high beam, uh, it runs about 0.86 volts or something like that. So all the, the high beam shit switching is controlled um, via some computer electronic trickery or some shit like that. So yeah, getting a, getting auxiliary lights to run, you know, off a relay the old school way, which you know used to be real easy. Uh, it's just not anymore. So I actually got in contact with NURB1 about um, about doing this and he said he couldn't figure it out either. He he tried all different sorts of things and ended up just putting a switch on the handlebars so uh, he couldn't get it to work. If, if an engineer can't do it, then I've got no hope. <laughs> but basically, I didn't want to give up on, on the idea because, you know, using, using the auxiliary lights at night um, with a switch, uh, you know, when you've got sometimes you know oncoming traffic um, and you have to dip your lights basically it means you've got to dip your main headlight and the auxiliary lights need to be turned off as well so you've got two switches every time a car uh, comes the other way or whatever uh, it was just i just i didn't want to do that so i kept searching for an answer on google and i finally found something now i'm not going to take credit for it um, i'm going to put a link to the guy who whose uh, instructions I use is actually a Frenchman, very smart Frenchman, obviously. Um, it took me quite a while to decipher all this, um, these different posts on this forum and and uh, wiring diagrams written in French and stuff. But I finally figured it out enough to give it a go myself, and I'm uh, happy to say that it works 100%. Now my actual auxiliary lights haven't turned up in the mail yet. Uh, they're coming from America, um, so I don't. Um, I can't test them with the actual lights, but as proof of concept, I have wired up um, just some standard uh, non-LED uh, indicator lights uh, hooked up to the, to the relay the way it's wired, um, and it all works perfectly. So yeah, after seeing all the stuff on the net, I thought I'd make a quick video to basically try and put it into layperson terms, give you you know a video of, of how, it's, how I've done it, how it's done. Um, a lot easier than trying to decipher um, wiring diagrams and stuff. The job I've done here is a bit dodgy, um, but as I said, it's just a proof of concept. It's working. It's going to be all tidied up and, and done properly. After I make this video, I just wanted to show you guys basically while well, it's all still um, easy to see. So without crapping on too much more, um, basically all you need is a standard four pin uh, automotive relay. Um, I've wired into the um, the plug for the heated grips, the accessory, as far as I know, that, that's what that one there is for. There's a three wire plug behind the uh, right hand side fairing here. I just cut the plug off and I've just um, basically soldered the wires, my wires into that, um, into that harness. So as far as I know, that's a 10 amp fused uh, line for the heated grips, as I said. The other, there is a two, a two wire uh, accessory power plug here as well which I've already used for my uh, USB charging ports so um, that one was only a 2 amp fuse I believe so basically all you need to do is get your standard relay and wire it just a little bit differently to to what you normally would um, to get this working I don't know how it works I'm not going to pretend that I know how it works I'm not going to try and explain to you how it works because I don't know all I do know is that it does work so this is a, a rough wiring diagram that hopefully you can understand. This is basically how it's wired up. So obviously your relay terminals are numbered. 
Um, 85 and 30 both go to power. I've got them going to obviously accessory power on the um, heated grips circuit. Number 86 goes to this yellow wire, which is the trigger for the high beam. And 87 goes to your lights, um, your positive on your LED lights or whatever. And then obviously you've got um, your negative from your lights it needs to go to earth or back to the negative on, uh, on your heated grip circuit. So as you can see here, I've um, haven't been having a fun time with this. Oh. Okay, so that's the relay obviously. Now don't worry about these. Both of these are positive, okay? I know one's black and one's red, it's all I had. So both of those are going to the accessory positive, okay, one on each wire. They're both going to the relay um, on the numbers I mentioned earlier. Okay, so both positive. That negative there can go to the negative of your lights if you want to, if you don't want to run them straight to earth. This one here is our trigger wire. I've made that one yellow because it hooks into a yellow wire as well. If you, um, so you've got this plug here, that's actually your headlight wiring um, harness. So you'll be able to see there. You've got a yellow wire, a brown, a blue, and there's also a yellow with a black stripe. Now we want the yellow wire, the plain yellow wire. I've tapped into it here. Um, I actually just cut the wire and soldered, soldered it together with this extension wire here. A lot of people um, are a bit fussy and weird about cutting their harnesses, but um, I think if you know what you're doing with a soldering iron and, and some heat shrink and a bit of electrical tape then you don't really have too many worries with that um, doesn't bother me in the slightest so yeah tapped into that yellow wire there guys that one goes to the relay as well okay and that leaves 87 which goes to your lights your positive your power for your lights don't worry about this dodgy wiring it works <laughs> for now so that is basically it guys that's all you need to do Okay, so the negative of my lights here, sorry, this one, is just earthed. I've just got it connected to that bolt for now, just, just so it works. Um, the positive, as I said, goes to the relay. So we're just going to imagine that these are some cool LED auxiliary lights. Obviously, they're just incandescent um, indicator bulbs. And um, I will show you guys that it does indeed work. Okay, let's we'll turn the key on. It's on, um, we're on low beam at the moment. Okay, so that's regular low beam. Uh, nothing weird going on. We'll flick, flick to high beam. You can see the high beams on the main headlight work, as well as the two auxiliary lights. Low beam, normal. High beam. So if I disconnect the power to the auxiliary lights, it's not like the, uh, the main lights dim or anything. Now, I know that uh, the LEDs are probably gonna draw a fair bit more power than these little bulbs, but I think it's going to be fine. Alrighty, hey guys, there you have it. Um, definitely works. Seems to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and tidy all this up and uh, get it all wired properly. Um, I'll probably end up with just having two wires um, hanging or zip tied up underneath the front there, ready for when my lights still arrive. I'll be able to wire them straight in and uh, off she goes. So um, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like once I've got it all tidied up anyway. All right guys, um, as you can hopefully see there, I've got it all nicely squared away now. Um, I've bolted the relay up up there, just drilled a hole in that plastic. It's pretty much tucked up out of the way there, a nice spot for it. I've actually run a bit of silicon around the bottom of the relay because I don't think they're waterproof very well, but um, yeah, hopefully a bit of silicon will keep most of the water out. You know, you can put this under your seat if you want to. Uh, just means running more wires. This is probably the easiest spot to, to do it all. You don't really have to run wires anywhere apart from, you know, from here to to your lights. So, yeah, 
That's it. The wire to the lights just runs along here. Got double insulation on there. Down through there and out here, but you know, that's gonna depend on where you wanna put your lights. A Couple of other things to quickly note too, guys. I know that the, the designated auxiliary port for the fog lights is on the other side of the bike. You can use that side one if you want to. Um, you know, if you're already using this for your heated grips, I don't think it matters. Um, I've just done it this way because it's easier to get to this yellow headlight trigger wire on this side of the bike, obviously, if you need to run it to the other side, so be it. Um, also, you know, you can still do this with the switch. Um, obviously, if you want to have a switch, um, you know, be able to run your high beams without the auxiliaries. If you, you know, you want to switch them off for whatever reason, you can just put a switch on that yellow wire. Uh, no problems there, I don't think. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to be impatient waiting for my actual lights to turn up so I can finish the job. Once more, big uh, shout out um, and all the credit goes to uh, that French guy. Uh, awesome work, mate. Thank you. I don't know his name, so I can't give him a proper shout out. Even if I did know it, I probably couldn't pronounce it. Um, but anyway, thanks, man. Um, good stuff. Yeah, normally I just do a, a bodgy job with the, the joining of wires and stuff when I'm wiring up lights and such, but I went went out and bought a, one of these douche plugs or whatever you call them, <laughs> weatherproof and dustproof. I think it's actually Deutsch, but it looks like douche to me, so I'm going to call them a douche plug. Never used one of these before, never wired one up. I don't actually have the proper crimping tool for it, but I think what I'll try and do is um, just run some solder down inside them. To, to connect the wires. I think solder is probably a better, more reliable join than uh, than the crimping anyway. So we'll give that a go and see how it works. Hopefully you guys can see that. Looks like it's working. That's a beautiful join. Ooh, that's a hot join. I don't reckon you can get any better than soldering. That's um, that's way better than crimping the shit. So happy with that. Now to figure out how to um, put the rest of this together. Alright, so I think we just pack these up into the rubber until they click into place. Alright, so I've figured out the Deutsch connector. Pretty cool. They are reusable, uh, reconfigurable. Never, never done one of these before, but um, yeah, there you go. So when I get the lights, they'll both be wired positive and negative to that plug, and boom, done. So half an hour, I'll just sit tie that up somewhere safe. Alright guys, that's uh, that's about it. I will do a bit of a, a video on fitting the auxiliary lights when they do arrive. Uh, maybe do a bit of a quick review on them. They are cheap Amazon ones, so we'll see how they go. I've seen some pretty good reviews of them. But yeah, as always, I hope this video has helped somebody out there that's uh, trying to do the same thing that I am. If you uh, got something out of the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.